So I'm not sure how loud I can be. I'm in an office that's not normally where I sit, but um, hopefully the microphone is of reasonable quality. I usually have a separate mic, but now I'm just working at a computer and not in my home so I can get this video out to you guys. I will post it up in Blackboard just like I did the last one, and I will email you, of course. Hopefully you've received it. So this is the last example from last night's lecture that we didn't get to. And Sasha is wondering what percent of students on our campus live in the dorms. That would be the research question. One of her friends told her that 60% of students live in dorms at their school. Okay, and we're going to end up using that 60% as our substitute, if you can think of it that way, uh, substitute parameter for our population proportion because we don't really know and we're not going to really know because one of the reasons why we do these simulations or take smaller samples is because we don't want to or can't or it's impractical to run around and ask every single student uh, if they live in the dorms or not. Uh, we could probably get some of the information from one of the admin offices, but that's not the gist of this question. So she says that her friend tells her that 60% of students live in the dorms. So Sasha randomly selects 148 students at the school and asks each of them if they live in the dorms or not. She gets a positive result from 76 out of 148 students, which is 51%. This is contrary to the 60% uh, that she was told by her friend. And so this 50 this 51% comes from those that she sampled uh, and they live in the dorms. Use this sample to test whether or not her friend seems right or not. Okay, so the, I think this key sentence, even though it's constructed not so great, use this sample to test whether or not her friend seems right or not. Okay, so keep that in mind. So part A, assign appropriate, num uh, appropriate symbols and the numbers to the numbers 148, 60, and 51%. I'm hoping that you entered pi for the 60%. I kind of mentioned that, that that's going to be our uh, parameter uh, proportion, our population proportion, which is going to be pi. 51% 51 51 is our p hat, and I can't, there's not a symbol for p hat. And then 148, uh, the best word I could come up with is a sample. And that's, you can also think of it as, um, uh, for the applet, it would be the uh, number of tosses. But of course, we're not tossing any humans, uh, whether they live in the dorm or not. So our null hypothesis and suggestion. If you're just sitting here watching it passively, then you're really probably not learning. Um, what I might I suggest is you hit pause right now, you fill out part B, and then you hit play so that you get the answer that I put. You can see if your your answer matches up. And if not, if, you're not under, if you don't understand or I haven't explained it clearly afterwards, then you probably need to re uh, you probably need to contact me or go see uh, a tutor over at the math center in second floor Washington. So write the appropriate null and alternative hypothesis in words and in symbols. So um, in symbols, I think we have an easier time with that. We have pi is equal to 0.6, according to her friend. And the alternative to that would be, now the question is, is are we going to have pi is less than, pi is greater than, or pi is not equal to, since we've been introduced to the two-tailed uh, test. So. In this particular case, uh, pi is greater than point uh, greater than 0.6 is not an option because our parameter is 51%, and our parameter is 51%, which is less than 60. So some of you might be thinking, just possibly out of habit, that we are going with uh, that. But up here, of course, she says, friends, friends seems right or not. So either it's 0.6 or it's not 0.6, and this language is what drives me to want to put not equal to, which there is no symbol. So you have to type in not equal to, uh, sorry, the number of students that live in the dorms. I guess I'll just write dorms. It shouldn't be number, the proportion or percentage of students that live in the dorms is 60%. Okay? And that's our null hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is that 
the proportion of students that live in the dorms is, is not 60%. Okay? Can we use this theory of gross, the theory of based approach? We should say yes. Why? We have both 10 samples of our 10 people or a count of 10, I guess 10 students that are a success in our survey, which means they live in the dorm. I should say at least 10 students that are a success live in the dorm and at least 10 students that represent a failure and that would be does not live in the dorm. Right. Hopefully remember that. That's a validity test for the theoretical calculations. So the rest of this rest of this example is asking you to do these calculations uh, which is basically a theoretical based approach to this uh, hypothesis test. The null distribution in the problem is pictured below. It has an approximate standard deviation of that expression based on the value of pi in null hypothesis. Calculate the value of standard deviation of this distribution round to the tenths place. So that's going to be 0.6 and of course this is going to be 1, time, 1 minus 0.6 and n is going to be 148, which is our sample size. And so this is still 0.6. 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4. And so I have 0.6 times 0.4. That's still 148, did not change. 0 0.6 times 0.4 is 0.24. Oops. And n is still 148. And then the square root of 0 0.24 divided by 148, I get 0 0.04029, blah, blah, blah. So that's the rounded. So my standard deviation is 0 0.0403. Enter the, appro the appropriate numerical values in the graph below. The vertical lines indicate the locations of plus or minus 1 standard deviations and plus or minus 2 standard deviations. So hopefully from last night, we know that we want this to be minus 1. This blue line is minus 2. This blue line here is plus 1 because I'm one standard deviation from the mean. This one is plus 2. And this one here is the book seems to want to put pi or mu or whichever one we're using, in this case, put 0.6, which is accurate. But what I would prefer that you put is 0 or comma. 0.6, and it looks like my boxes uh, are trimming off the bottom here. Calculate the z-score for your observed sample statistics. So remember this. Okay, so p hat was 0.51, pi was 0.6, and the standard deviation was 0 0.0403. And when I take 0.51 and subtract 0.6, I get 0 0.09, yes, 0 0.0403, and then when I do that division, 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.0403, I get a z-score of, I got a z-score of negative 2.23, negative 2.23. Now, that's on the left-hand side because we were doing a two-tailed two test, okay? How do I know that? When I calculate this, it's negative 2.23. So there's one over here that's negative 2.23 standard deviations from the mean. So negative means go to the left. We got one, two, point two three. There's also another one at positive 2.23. Why? Because we did a two-tailed test not equal to. So use your z-score 
from part E to make a conclusion about the research question in context. We can with, with a z-score of plus or minus 2.23 that our friend is incorrect and that the proportion of students living in the dorms is not 60%. Remember, this that's because this is because a z score of 2.23 is represents strong evidence against the null hypothesis and thus we reject the null hypothesis okay and so all we know is it's not 60 percent it doesn't mean that we're at 51 percent it just means that 60 percent is not correct because our sample was large enough that we could run this uh, theoretically based analysis and come to this conclusion okay Sorry about the jumping around on the screen and all that kind of stuff. Um, we could have also, but I'm telling you, the expectation is you are doing this, that you can do this by hand as well, so that you can do these calculations by hand. That's the expectation, but I will show you we can also do this uh, in the applet. So if I have the applet here, we can set this up so, and I'm using the theory-based inference which is, again, the bottom selection of here on the page of applets, which you have a link to. So it's a one proportion. My n is 148, because I'm choosing 148, or Sarah chose 148 random uh, students. My count is 76, I think it was. She had 76 that were successful. We get this p hat of 0.513. Now, I do want to test significance. And her friend told us that there are 60% of the people live in the dorm. Our alternative hypothesis is no, she's wrong. It's point, not 0.6. And so we're, and we're doing a two-tailed test. Why are we doing a two-tailed test? Where did I indicate two-tail? Oh, because of this equal sign, not equal sign. Um, because we're just trying to indicate whether it is 0.6 or not 0.6. She's right or she's wrong. So we hit calculate and we get 0.513. This is the rest of the proportion that represents failure. Uh, we had 76 here. We had more than 10 in the failure. I didn't do the subtraction, which means that we can do this theoretically based uh, analysis or inference. We get close to the same numbers. I'm sure it has to do with rounding this. If I'm rounding at 0.51 instead of 0.53, um, I don't know if that lets me do that. Yes, it does. And we get 2.32 and I got 2.23. So it could be in the rounding of the standard deviation and such. So that rounding changes what's going on here, but we still get similar results and the same conclusion that we're going to reject the null and understand that Sarah's friend is incorrect about the 60% of students living in dorms. All right, and that should be it. Now I got to go edit.